We grew close to 300 pounds of potatoes here on our homestead this year. I love growing potatoes, but if you're gonna grow them in quantity, you have to know how to store them so they don't go bad. In this video, I'll show you exactly how we harvest our potatoes to maximize their shelf life and how we store them without having a root cellar. So I've pushed my timeline as long as I can. We're down to the wire. We gotta get the potatoes harvested like today. Potato patch isn't far away, but uh, we're gonna have a lot of potatoes to carry and I don't wanna do it by hand, so I am taking the truck over there. Hold on, I'm gonna recruit some child labor. Can you guys come help me um, harvest potatoes, please? Because I need all the help I can get. Daddy, first I need to make this, and then I'll just me let this sit. There, yeah. Hey guys, come help me get some tools out of the greenhouse. Finish the spinach? Yep. Is it good? Uh huh. Yeah. a little nervous to see how these look. It was super cold last weekend, like below zero, and there was no way I could get the potatoes out before that happened. So I'm hoping that the ones that were close to the top of the soil aren't ruined, so we'll see. So this potato was out of the ground. You can see it got frozen and it's super squishy and gross. So this whole thing was our potato patch this year for the first time. Um, we had rows on each side of this walkway we did Yukon Gold and Russet, and they grew great. We just had a simple uh, sprinkler line, a little drip system out here, and it was pretty much planted and forget it. I think this is the easiest potato crop I've ever grown. Whoa! Step just, back! Just grab one. Just grab a box. Step, step, step back. Step, step, step. How did your face get so dirty? Uh, Let's see what we have here. We have a potato plant and you wait to harvest them until they're dried up like this, um, which is usually late into the fall. So this is what I do. I'll leave them till I'm ready and then I kind of pull it out a little bit so it starts to loosen the soil. Oh, potato! So thankfully these potatoes that were under the ground are fine. They're nice and firm. They're just like we want them to be. So we'll probably lose a couple that were smushy from being frozen, but I think the majority will be okay. I like to use our hands as much as possible because Otherwise, I am really good at stabbing the potatoes with the shovel. And we just kind of have to dig around in there, like a treasure hunt, till we find, oh, there's one over here, guys. Look at that big one, holy moly. There's one right there, Mom. Ah. Okay. There you go, good job. Oh, another one. It's like gold. Can you get it? Good job. Good job, okay. Let's see, so then once we get all we can find with our fingers, then I go in with my shovel. The soil right now is perfect for harvest. So we had snow about a week ago, so it's just a little bit damp, but it's not muddy and it's not um, gonna be sticking to the potatoes. If you harvest them when everything's too wet, it's not only a pain, but you have to really be careful that they're dry before you put them into storage. even alive. It's alive, huh? I never had the, this long of worm. Go back in the dirt. Here you go, wormy. So this is what you don't want to happen. Like, it, I got it good. We can still use this one, but we're gonna have to use it up right away since I stabbed it, basically. So, poor potato.
Dad, where did you get the cucumber? That's an old cucumber. Oh, <laughs> That's yeah. pretty gross. It's okay, he can have it. So we went in for a water break and I changed because it's hot. It's seven. It's 72 degrees and it's November. But anyway, we're back at it. We got all the Yukon Golds pretty much harvested. Now we're on to the russets, which were on the other side of the row. <laughs> So everybody went and got their mud boots, took a little break. You guys ready to get started again? So usually I buy seed potatoes and that's what I plant in the early summer. But this year because of COVID, all the seed potatoes were sold out. So what we did, we just went to the grocery store and got bags of regular old organic potatoes. I cut them up into chunks and pl we planted those and it worked really, really good. So we got many, many pounds of potatoes for like 10 bucks worth of grocery store potatoes. Not too bad. We did lose some to the frost, but not, not horrible. And next year, I think we will hopefully double this, but I'm happy with this for 2020. We're planning on building an actual old time root cellar in this location by the garden next year. But since it's not ready right now, we'll have to find another way to store this year's harvest. So the first thing you want to do when you're storing potatoes long term is cure them. And generally people will do that by harvesting them and then laying them out in a single layer in a dark place for oh, a couple days up to a week or so. Now these have been sitting in the ground for quite a while. They were very dry. So I just let them sit in boxes in our shop. The schoolroom is not an ideal place to sort potatoes, but it's cold and mucky and wet outside and I'm too lazy to haul them over to our big shop, do the sorting and then haul them back in here. So if I have to mop the floor when we're done, so be it. I'm kind of curious how many pounds we have. You guys want to weigh these? Okay, so that's 14 pounds, Bridge. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and write 14 over on the board. We'll keep track of each box. 14 plus. Okay. It's pretty heavy. Thirty-six pounds on that box. Okay. There's our counts. What's the grand total? Two hundred and eighteen pounds. Is that what you got? Yep. I let you cheat and use a calculator instead of you doing it by hand. Okay, two hundred and eighteen pounds. We've probably already harvested and used throughout the late summer and into fall about fifty pounds. So that is close to 300 pounds of potatoes we grew this year with just a couple bags of cheap organic grocery store potatoes as our starting point. Now we just got to save these babies for later in the year because I can't eat all of these in the next couple of weeks. That wouldn't be good. Okay. Most of these are pretty good because we sorted out the bad ones during harvest. Uh, oh, here's one we missed. You can see that line. And there's a squishy spot here. This was one that was sitting too close to the surface when our cold snap hit a couple weeks ago. So we can probably use part of this potato right away. I'd have to cut into it or we can feed it to the chickens. So I'm gonna set him aside. So it is the light sunlight or other light that causes potatoes to turn green. So sometimes if they're not covered sufficiently with soil, that's why we get green spots. And that's why it's really important if they're in storage, they need to be in a really, really dark place. Whoops, here's one that I cut with a shovel. So it needs to be set out, use quickly. Squishy. Squishy, okay. Put it aside. Oh, squishy. Oh, yep, yeah, that's squishy too. We're done sorting. We got most of the squishy ones out. You can see here by our pile of rejects that for us, leaving the potatoes in the ground over the winter and harvesting them as needed is not a good option uh, because we live in a place where the ground freezes solid and it just gets super cold. The good news is we don't have to throw all of these away. We just need to use them up. So I have a roast in the crock pot for supper tonight. I'm gonna to trim off the damaged portions of these guys and we will eat them. So this unfinished portion of our basement is where I keep my potatoes and onions um, throughout the winter. Like I said, it's not the most ideal place. It's a little warmer than I would like. It's not humid. 
but it's way better than keeping them upstairs where the house is much warmer. If you have an unheated garage or shop that won't freeze solid, that's even better. It is pitch black in this room once the door is shut and the light is off, so it keeps it very, very dark, which is exactly what you want. I would suggest storing in cardboard boxes. Avoid the urge to do plastic unless the plastic has a ton of ventilation, like you have a plastic crate, that would be okay, but a plastic tub like that would not because the potatoes need room to breathe, otherwise they will get moldy and nasty. Someday I'd like to have enough of these wooden crates to store all my potatoes in those, but I don't quite have enough yet. It's important that no matter where you store these in a legitimate root cellar or in your basement, that you check them about once a week, rummage through to see if anyone is going bad. Sprouts aren't a bad thing, just grab the ones that are sprouting, knock the sprouts off and you can go ahead and eat them. Is it good? Uh-huh. Tastes like dirt? Not really. <laughs> Is this good? It's good? Mm-hmm. Tastes like a raw potato with dirt on it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Dad, your gloves are clean, Sage. Uh, what? <laughs> Immune systems of steel. If you want to check out the rest of the stuff I have stashed in my basement pantry, watch this video.